believe you were in charge of the Turkish bath on the Titanic. I was. And where were you when the iceberg hit the ship? I was in bed. And when did you first realize things were wrong? Well, naturally the fog broke us up and uh, everybody got to their feet and uh, I went into a little passage and I met the second steward, which was Mr. Dodd, and he said, for God's sake, get some clothes on, get up on deck. I said, what's wrong? He said, I don't know. So, of course, we, everybody got, I had a coat on a nightdress, and we got up on deck, and everybody was most cheerful. When did you first realize how serious things were? I didn't think it was serious, because I didn't think it was possible a big ship like that could sink. And uh, everybody was busy, and they was lowering the lifeboats, and the crew were marvellous. Everybody was cheerful. And how did you escape? In the last lifeboat. And I didn't want to go. And then, of course, you realised that things were very serious. Yes, I did. And did you see the ship sink? I did. It sank very quickly. That must have been a most dramatic sight. It was, because you could just see the lights going down and down. Did you hear the music playing? I did. Almost till the end? Till the end, I, I heard them play, you know, um, Nearer My God to Thee. Nearer My God to Thee. And uh, I met, I met a steward and he said, you are grab hold of this, and it was a baby. So I took the baby, and then when they lowered the last life, but I didn't want to go. And they said, one of the, other stewards of Mr. Wheat, he was helping lower him, and Mr. Murdoch, he was the chief steward, and he, shouted, he was shouting out, ladies, children and women first. They was marvellous. And you took the baby? I took the baby, and I didn't want to go, so they said, come on. And I went down in the last lifeboat, and there was, I think there was 72 in it, and two of the stewards manned, uh, you know, manned the boat. And which ship rescued you? Carpathia. The Carpathia. And she was full, of course, going on the Mediterranean cruise. And you brought the baby safely back with you? No. I, when, when we got on the ship, they, the Italian doctor called out for anybody can help. So they had big jars of, uh, enough, you know, for the Well, only that the stewards of the Carpathia were waiting there with brandy and hot blankets for the survivors. And then, of course, there wasn't much space for us. We had to go where we could, and the kindness of some of the people which was going the Mediterranean cruise helped out with letting us, you know, sleep. When you first went up on the deck of the Titanic, does anything stand out in your memory? Only that everybody was most cheerful, and everybody was helping one another, and uh, trying to do what they could. They never thought it was so serious. What did you take with you? Well, um, my of, clothes. Of your personal things? Nothing at all. No. I went back to get some personal things that I had, some money and stuff, but the water was coming down the, you know, the, uh, the stairs, so I had to go back. You saw the water? Oh, yes, coming down the gangways, you know, they call it. So I went back, so and everybody was up on deck then. How long were you on deck before you got in the lifeboat? About an hour. And then how long were you at sea before you were rescued? We was, it was about two o'clock, I think. It was near about two o'clock when we was picked up. Then we floated round all night in the lifeboats. And then the, we was picked up by the Carpathia. You see, we couldn't... She couldn't come nearer to us. We had to go to them, you see, on account of wanting to sink. And you could hear the ice crashing the, the sides of the boats. You saw ice all around you? Oh, yes. Crashing the... And the water of the, the ocean was as smooth as a pond. And you and were in the water until... You were in the boat until the daylight? Next, yes, yes. quite daylight. And uh, then we was brought on to New York and the Lapland brought us back to Plymouth the survivors which had to come back. So then of course we was kept there a little while and then brought on to Southampton. Of course that was very sad because 
everybody thought she knew somebody who was lost and I had so many friends on there and uh, you couldn't tell them anything. And then you yourself went back to sea? Yes. You went back yes. with the White Star Company? Yes. I made them what they call a Mediterranean cruise. Then I was a little wild and then I gave it up and come out of this country to live. To live here? Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Serpent. Okay. Where were you when the iceberg struck the ship? I just retired. And did you realize uh, that something serious had happened straight away? No. When did you first realize that the ship was in trouble? Until we got up and I met one of the stewards, Mr. Dodd, and he said, I said, what's wrong? He says, I don't know, but get up on deck. Everybody get up on deck, which we did. Then we didn't think it was serious. And you stayed on deck some time? Yes, quite a while. And everybody was helping, all the stewards, and everybody was helping to put the people in the lifeboats. And uh, one of the stewards gave me a baby to take care of. And we were all waited in turn to get in the lifeboat. I never wanted to go because I didn't think it was possible that anything could... I felt I was safer on the, the deck of the ship. But uh, she sank very quickly. And I was in the last lifeboat, which was lowered. And then so you, 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 how long were you at sea? Uh, all night. All night? Yes, yeah. all night. Right, go ahead. And then you went back to sea? I did. And I made a Mediterranean cruise. Wonderful. With the Bright Star. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Slocum. Thank you. I was in the steerage class, and uh, I was in bed, and then a young man knocked on the door, and uh, he told me there was some trouble with the ship. So I said, throw off my shoes, and I put them on me, because I thought all I had to Mrs. Manning, where were you when the ship struck the iceberg? Um, in the steerage, in the steerage class. You were emigrating to America? Yes, I was coming over here to my sister. If I may ask, how old were you then? I was 16, going on 17, be 17 in October. And when did you first realize how serious the trouble was? Oh, I didn't until I got to this country. I, I thought it was part of the trip, to tell you the truth. I, I didn't realize that there was any danger. You didn't realize there was any danger? No, I thought that that was a pretty hard way to get here, but I, I, I didn't really think it was as bad as it was until after. When the alarm was sounded, what happened? Well, I, I was asleep at the time, and I, I thought then the ship had landed. So I thought we were here, in this country. Then you went up on deck? And then I went up on deck, and then we were told to go down, that there was a piece of ice on deck, and that when they get it off, of it, everything would be all right, to go down and go to bed. How did you escape? Well, we were on, standing on the steerage, third class they call it, and um, then we couldn't get up to second. And of course then there was one man with us and he was our guardian angel and he said, for God's sake, let the women up. So at that I got up and then to you second. Got, mm -hmm. And then you got into a lifeboat? And no, then I had to go to first cabin. The lifeboats were only going from first cabin. So there was a man on the second deck and he asked me to go on his shoulder and I climbed over and then I that I think it was the last boat that was going out. Did you take it? They let me on because there was too many on the boat already. But you got into the boat. But I said to the man, I'd like to go with my sister because there was a neighbor with me and I thought he'd feel it. Because I didn't want to lose the crowd. I didn't really think it was any danger, but I thought I'd miss them in the dark. You know, it was very dark. Did night. you see the ship sink? Oh, yes. I was looking at it sinking when we were in the lifeboat, because we were in the lifeboats for nine hours. And then which ship rescued you? Carpathia. Carpathia picked us up then early in the morning, about nine o'clock or something. I think it was about nine o'clock in the morning. And Do you remember anything particularly of the scenes that night? When you were in the lifeboat? And that was the most terrific time of all, to the shock, you know, for to hear the explosions. And uh, when the boilers must have hit the water, I guess, and then all the wreckage was falling in us, and we used to push it away. 
you know, from the boat, so we wouldn't sink because we were really packed capacity in the boat, you know. Did you rescue anyone from the water? Oh, yes. We used to take dry ones from another boat, and they used to pick wet ones up then and put all the wet ones together in, a, in another boat so as that there wouldn't be. Were there only women and children in your boat? Oh, yes. There was women. Uh, there was women and one man. He had jumped in with a raincoat and a towel on his head, and he used to help us row the boat, and we used to keep on taking directions from the men that was, uh, there was a couple of men, I guess, on uh, really directing the boats to go wherever the cafe theater was, you know. Did you see the Titanic sending up rockets? Oh, yes. They kept singing, sending them up until the last minute. Kept going up all the time. And did you hear the music playing? Yes, yes. Do you remember what they played? Uh, well, in, in our part, they were singing um, Near My God to Thee, but uh, upstairs there were playing different sounds, you know, but I didn't hear them then because I was rushing for to get after the crowd that was with me. Because I didn't want to lose them in the dark. You see, it was dark at night, and uh, you had to try to find your friends, you know. And then you, <coughs> when you were rescued in the Carpathia, you came on to America. Yes. And you've never been back to Ireland since? Never back since. You've never no. been to see again? No, never. I'd like to go I, if I, oh, Oh, but then I get the chills and I say, no, I won't. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Annie. Uh, you're welcome. Mrs. Manning, where were you when the iceberg struck the Titanic? I was in the steerage, call it third class. Mm -hmm. You were emigrating to, to America? Yes, my sister was here. And how old were you then, if I may ask? I was um, 16, going to be 17 in um, October. Uh, Right. Mrs. Manning, where were you when the iceberg struck the Titanic? I was in uh, Steerage, mm -hmm. third class. And you were emigrating to America? Uh, yes, sir. And how old were you then, if I may ask? I was 16. And what do you chiefly remember uh, of that night? Well, I remember trying for to get upstairs, for to get to a lifeboat. There was a lot of 